Tomorrow for True Balance Cooking. Today we're going to be making some roasted chicken, some braised mustard greens, and some glazed carrots. You know, the great thing about this meal is it's wholesome, it's nutritious, and it couldn't taste any better. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get these mustard greens in the pot because they take about an hour to cook. Because they take so long to cook and break down, we're able to impart some great big flavors on them like jalapenos, shallots, garlic, sherry vinegar, and honey. You know, the great thing about mustard greens is that not only do they have vitamins K, A, and C, they also help fight against cancer, and on top of that, have next to no calories. Now that we have our shallots minced, we're just going to mince some garlic and jalapenos, get that in as a base flavor for our great mustard greens that we're going to braise down. A great new study just came out about jalapenos which shows that the, the enzyme in them that makes them spicy is also able to help them fight cancer. We're just getting some olive oil heated up so we can saute our shallots, garlic, and jalapenos as the base flavor for our mustard greens. We're going to dump in, this again is just two shallots, a couple cloves of garlic, and one jalapeno all minced up. I find it's really great to salt these as soon as they get into the pan. It lets the onions sweat a little bit and release some of their great flavor without browning too much. Just about a teaspoon of salt will do. So now while these are sautéing up and starting to break down, we're going to come over here and I'm going to show you how to clean your mustard greens. Mustard greens are so fibrous and that's why it takes them a long time to cook down. But they have this rib that runs down the back that is just going to be no fun to eat. So really simply what we can do is just fold the mustard green in half, grab this rib and just crack it all the way down along the line and that goes right into our garbage bowl. Again, what we can do, this is a smaller one, less fibrous rib, but it's still not going to be very much fun to chew on. So you just grab that rib, pop it out into your garbage bowl, and we have some great mustard greens that are ready to braise. So now that we have our shallots, garlic, and jalapeno cooked down to about a translucent state, and this is a pound of mustard greens, do not worry, they will cook down, and about a half a cup of sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar is great because it imparts this great big vinegar flavor that's going to have a little bit of sweetness as it cooks down. After our sherry vinegar, we're going to use about three or four tablespoons of honey. Again, this is just to bring out those great flavors in the mustard greens, as well as another couple teaspoons of salt to finish their braising. It's always great to have a big bold flavor like our jalapenos and our sherry vinegar. What the honey is going to be able to do is take that cleansing flavor of the vinegar and really mellow that out, give us some sweetness to go along with the very low fat content in the chicken as well as our sweet glazed carrots. So with the temperature up to about medium high, we're just going to let the bottom mustard greens that are touching the bottom with our great sherry vinegar and all that cook down a little bit. Make sure to move them around so all of them get to wilt. Now that we have our mustard greens braising away on the, on the stove there, we're going to have a roast chicken straight out of the countryside of France. Now the first thing that we have to go over is trussing our chicken. If we, if we roast our chicken like this, everything's all splayed out, the heat's going to hit us in different directions, by the time our breast is cooked, our thighs are still going to be raw. By the time our thighs are well cooked, our breast is going to be terribly overdone and it's going to be like chewing on a piece of cotton. Now, you want to have something in the cavity of the bird because if you allow the heat to get into the cavity of the bird, you're not only cooking it from the outside, but you're also letting it cook from the inside. Your breast is going to get done twice as fast and again, you're going to have cotton balls and you're going to have raw chicken out here, which nobody wants to have. So, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to take half a lemon and a little piece of a carrot, pop those two in the cavity of the bird, and that will ensure our cooking from the outside is the outside only. Trusting your chicken is an easy way to make sure that your chicken comes out perfect with perfectly cooked breasts as well as perfectly cooked thighs. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, are we the boss of the chicken? Yes, we are. This chicken works for us. So, we're going to take this bird, tuck the wings back, 
put it in a nice shape that's going to guarantee even cooking. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of twine, slip it under the back side of the bird, come over the legs, crisscross applesauce, as somebody much wiser used to say. So one more time, let's crisscross applesauce. We're going to bring our string up around the bird, flip it over onto its stomach, come underneath the backbone, we're going to go once, gathering up the ends, cut them off with your knife, roll it over, and we have a perfectly, we have a chicken ready for great roasting. We're just going to season the skin so we get that nice crispy skin that everybody loves about chicken so much. We're just going to take a little bit of time, if it's not fresh that's great, if you can find fresh that's even better. Sprinkle it from up high so we get good distribution. Pat that in. We're going to take a little bit of salt. Also, remember, up high so we get even distribution. That's going to lead to that great crunchy skin that we all love so much. Now that we have our chicken that's seasoned and trussed, we're just going to put it into any pan that's wide enough to hold it. Then we're going to move into our oven that was previewed at 400 degrees for approximately 50 minutes or until the deepest part of the thigh registers at 155 degrees. Now we have our mustard greens braising and our chicken roasting in the oven. It's time to focus on our glazed carrots. A really simple trick for peeling carrots that I like to use is to put down a towel or a piece of parchment paper or newspaper or whatever you have lying around. Peel them over the towel so then when, you, when you're done you have all your peels right there. You can just pick up the corners and toss them in the trash and not have to worry about chasing peels everywhere. Remember when we're cooking anything, not just glazed carrots, is that we want to cut everything to an even, even size. That way we, control, we can control the cooking, nothing gets overdone, nothing gets underdone. So we're going to cut our carrots to about a half inch, just simple rounds. We want to keep this meal really rustic with the great, uh, with the great greens and the roast chicken. So the idea behind glazing any vegetable, not just carrots, is that we're going to put our vegetable in a pan, cover it just enough with water, then add our seasonings and boil the water. What happens is as the water boils, the carrots or any vegetable cook perfectly all the way through and until the water evaporates all the way left. We're going to add some thyme, some lemon, some cinnamon, and some nutmeg just to help out the flavor of the carrots and boil the water. As the water boils, the carrots get cooked perfectly all the way through. When the water is done evaporating, all we have left is behind the seasonings, a little bit of oil that we put in there, and that makes a really beautiful glaze for our perfectly cooked carrots. Now we have our saucepan with our carrots and water already in. Now we're gonna add the seasonings. We have one sprig of thyme, one small section of lemon rind, and now what we're gonna add is we're gonna add some nutmeg and some cinnamon. We're not gonna add enough nutmeg and cinnamon to really taste them in the final dish, but nutmeg and cinnamon are both spices that help enhance the flavor of the, of the carrot itself. So like I said, we're just going to add, this is probably a quarter teaspoon, I'm just going to eye it, about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and another quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Now to that, we're just going to add a little bit of oil as well as some honey. Honey is really important because as that water evaporates off, we need some sugar content still left to help really glaze the carrots and help them be as sweet as they possibly can. And of course, just a little bit of salt to help balance out all the flavors. So our mustard greens have been braising for about 35 minutes. Our chicken is roasting in the oven and we're just waiting to start our carrots just so we have our timing all right. A great wine to have with this great meal that we're cooking is a Stephen Vincent Cabernet from the Sonoma Coast of California. This is a very subtle cab with a lot of big berry flavors to go with the rustic countryside meal that we've been preparing so far.
Cheers. Cheers. Our chicken's been in the oven for about 50 minutes. Our mustard greens are done braising. All we have to do is finish off our carrots while we let the chicken rest. Now the importance of resting your chicken or any other meat can never be understated. What happens when we cook our chicken is that all of the juices that are inside it start moving around. That's what happens when we apply heat to anything. The molecules speed up. Now if we were to take this beautiful roast chicken that we have here and cut into it right away, we'd lose all those juices. They would all just run right out. What happens when we rest it under loosely wrapped foil is we let those juices cool just a little bit and stay tight. Then when we cut into it, the juices stay in the meat and not on our cutting board. One misnomer about cooking chicken is that we can't let it come into contact with a wooden cutting board. However, we brought this chicken up to 155 degrees. Dangerous bacteria such as salmonella usually dies at about 140 degrees. So, with all the dangerous bacteria in this chicken cooked and it being perfectly cooked all the way through, now we're going to let it rest for about 20 minutes before we carve it. So with our chicken resting and our braised greens all done, now we're just working on our carrots. We've had this turned on high and it's now up to a vigorous boil. We just want to keep our eye on it to make sure that as the water evaporates we're right there to toss them around in that beautiful glaze that will be left in the pan. So one reason why people tend to avoid cooking a whole chicken or a whole turkey is to avoid carving which can seem like a daunting task. However, with a few simple tips we can just show you how easy it really is. It's going down in between the thighs. Come in here. We're going to find the joint. And drive straight through that joint once we get into it. Same thing with the other side. Another one of the advantages for roasting your own chicken, besides it being delicious, is the carcass. A lot of times this would end up straight in the trash bin, but with this carcass we can put it in a pot, cover it with water, add some carrots, onions, and celery, your standard mirepoix, let it boil for about three to four hours, and you have your own homemade chicken broth. Not boxed, not canned, you know exactly what's in it, and it can help the rest of your recipes become wholesome and filled with health. We're just sitting down to the meal that took us only an hour to prepare, cost $26, looking beautiful on the plate, tasting great, full of nutrients to give you a better tomorrow. This is Robert with True Balance Cooking. Food that's fitness approved.